Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing well. So, in the previous sessions, I had covered the basics of CAE domain part 1, part 2 session. So, in that, we had gone through the basics. So, uh, what are the element types and uh, what are the uh, different types of analysis we are conducting? What is MASH and uh, what are the uh, basic formulas we consider? What are the equations we consider? Okay. So everything we have covered in the previous sessions. So in the today's session, I'm here with the uh, Abacus and Hypermesh elements and element types and how we exactly need to uh, read them and what and all the things we need to consider while doing the uh, analysis. Okay, uh, we'll see these things in this session. Let's get started with this. Yep, so we have seen these things, right? Uh, in the previous session itself in part two uh for the 3d elements okay the solid elements we consider these c3d4 c3d6 okay d10 d20 d20 r in the sense reduced reduced integrated that is c3d20 ri uh for uh, heat transfer that is thermal analysis we consider this dc okay that is again 3d4 6, 8, 10, 15, and 20, like this. When it comes to shell, we have this SX, S8, and S8R reduced. So it, when it comes to Abacus, we only consider SX, S8, and S8R, not S3, S4, and all. So that you need to remember. This question has been asked during the interview. So I got confused. So I told S3, S4, everything. But uh, this is the scenario, OK? S3, S8, and S8R we consider for the uh, membrane that is shell elements and all plane stress cp s6 s8 and when it comes to plane strain we have these that is cpe 6 and 8 okay and beam elements b32 b32 r and again if you are going to consider other uh, like uh, elements like this rigid bodies and all so we have the advanced uh, elements that we can see later okay but we have covered all the element types here 1d 2d 3d okay so let's see how exactly we need to read it okay so one of uh, like the previous interview which i had faced uh, i was quite confident on this all the abacus elements type so he asked me which and all you want to consider on uh, uh, solid 3d element meshing and 2d element meshing so i said c3d4 c3d8 c3d20 then he asked what exactly it is c3d20 just name it no then like i got bluffed so that we should not do if you are going to answer any questions you should be perfect in it if you are telling c3d8 what is the application of it if you are going to uh, talk about c3d10 so why we use it what is the practical application that also you should know so if you are going to name it s3 s4 s6 s8 you need to check whether they are available in this abacus or not so which and all we considered what is first order second order everything we need to consider okay so let's see how exactly we need to read them so you could see uh, at your uh, left corner we have the uh, c3d20 rht means this is just for naming so we can take these namings into account c3d4 how exactly we need to read it so the c comes with Continuum, we call it as continuum for stress and displacement analysis, DC for heat transfer analysis, that is mass diffusion, we call it. Okay. So again, DCC will get it, that is convection and uh, diffusion. And acoustics, we have the AC naming in the beginning. If it comes to C, it is continuum, we need to consider we are doing dealing with the structural analysis, stress and displacement will take. So continuum, the first word. Okay, next 3D. Okay, C3D. It is not C3D. It is not C3D4. Okay, it is C3D4. It is quite confusing itself. We need to remember. We need to take these two in a single form. Okay. So what exactly it is? It is simple. That is, if you are considering 1D element, it is 1D. If you are considering the plane stress, plane strain, and the membranes, we're gonna have it. Uh, like uh, 2D, two-dimensional, okay. For plane stress, it is PS. For plane strain, it is PG. And when it comes to three-dimensional, it is 3D, okay. 
and access metric and other things these are the namings well so right now see we got it continuum 3d in the sense 3 dimensional that is this one okay next thing is the 20 what exactly it is the number of elements which that particular uh, uh, <coughs> the element contains okay these are the number of nodes inside it sorry so these are the number of nodes inside the elements so when it comes to uh, c3d8 you could see this is the continuum for structural analysis stress displacement 3d category it comes and d8 is the sorry 8 is the number of nodes 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 when it comes to this c3d20 you could see same thing it is continuum three dimensional 20 nodes are available in it all the corner nodes uh mid nodes okay and now oh, which is the first order and second order elements very important so when it comes to linear if the component if the element has the nodes on the corners only the corner points then it is the linear it is linear hexahedron this is the linear tetrahedron we call it as we call it as okay uh, this one done so when it comes to quadratic in the sense these are the second order elements okay quadratic tetrahedral elements we call it as quadratic hexahedral elements if it is linear hexahedron and linear tetrahedron first order if it is quadratic tetrahedron in the sense it is second order in abacus okay so same thing c3 d10 is the second order element c3 d4 is the first order element okay so if you are going to consider tetrahedron okay these are the triangular elements if you consider only 2d no it is in the triangular shape and if you convert it to a solid it has how many faces one two three four right so it is tetrahedron okay so if it is a linear tetrahedron first order elements you need to consider okay when it comes to second order if you are going to consider this c3 d4 tetrahedron element will become quadratic tetrahedron with c3 d10 okay so it's the same thing when it comes to c3 d8 it is the linear hexahedron 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 six faces one two three four and second two two side faces if you are going to convert into second order it is quadratic hexahedron mid nodes corner nodes including it is c3 d20 again you're gonna get it that is reduced again you will get it a reduced ri okay in compatible mode that is modified and all so if you get it r it is reduced what exactly it happens here is some of the elements will be reduced okay then hybrid option is also there okay then it is for uh, thermal and the temperature distribution you don't need to worry about it at the moment for structural analysis so up to here you need to remember okay c3 d20 r or ri you will get it hmm? and sometimes you're gonna get it modified as well okay for that explanation you can see my previous slides what exactly this and how, why we need to consider these well you got to know about these things right for uh, solid elements in short to summarize linear hexahedron first order quadratic hexahedron second order the naming is c3d8 and it is c3d20 here for tetrahedral elements c3d4 c3d10 first order and second order i hope it's clear now we'll see these shell elements the membrane or the thin elements if you are going to consider instead of taking 3d elements we're going to consider it to 2d elements okay a simple example here so in abacus as i said we are going to consider only s6 and s8 okay so s is the shell conventional naming for 3d it is continent continuum and here it is shell okay now next is the eight you already know it is the node right when it comes to this are reduced optional and uh, these are for the temperature like thermal analysis if you are going to consider the explicit analysis you might have this the warping considerations the warpage okay while uh, uh, mesh convergence criteria so to check the mesh quality or and all the uh, checks we're going to do so there you're going to have the suspect ratios skewness shrinkage warpage considerations uh jacobian points jacobian ratios and all so that we can see later fine so now you can see the degram 
all the elements right 2d elements so this is s3 and if you are going to consider only for the analysis these are the things okay this is the s6 and s8 okay I hope it's clear so it is a reduced integration in the sense you could able to see even you're gonna have the uh, the points at the center to consider the moments and all so again these all the things will come under the abacus element types okay well so for 1d this is the example so as i said b31 okay and uh, how exactly when i read it is the first one is the b more of pipe elements okay this is three is the uh pipe plane <clears throat> okay b more of pipe in plane two or sometimes you want to get it b or a plane in space so it is in space so it is three okay if it is in plane you will get it two 31 32 whatever the namings you want to consider now this is one is the linear element if it is two it is the paradigm elements okay second order elements i hope you got it right b31 is the first order b32 is the second order paradigm element oes open like hybrid you might get it sometimes okay this is the b31 the first order elements okay it is in space so this is how exactly you wanna read it when it comes to rigid elements the first one is a rigid element beam is the optional you're gonna get it rb sometimes or you will uh, yeah rb will be there or simple r will be there so you can see r3 r2 d2 d2 in the sense just 2d elements so it is in plane not in 3d okay so like this you can able to read it i hope it's clear so just to showcase you can see it is we have b32 b32 reduced b31 also for the first order okay so they haven't considered here so just for naming it is like that so if you want to do the analysis so if it is prescribed to consider that element we can take it or else a backers might not have that option to choose okay so i hope it's clear so this is the uh, uh detailed description about the abacus element types and how exactly we need to read and how we need to consider while doing the analysis so now when it comes to hyper mesh could you see there are shell and solid elements for this so for shell elements we're gonna consider c triad 3 c quad 4 c triad 6 and c quad 8 in the sense these are the c3 and these this is this and this are the first order and second order elements you can able to see the first order four and three nodes okay when you come to second order six and eight nodes okay these two you can see three and four nodes first order this is six and eight nodes second order for shell elements you need to remember there are six degrees of freedom for the shell elements so this question has been asked so uh, how many degrees of freedoms are there for shell elements and solid elements so for solid it is three degrees of freedom three translation here three translation and rotation as well for the shell now when when it comes to solid elements we have the tetrahedral elements as i said okay hexahedral elements penta and pyramid and hypermesh so i just wanted to include one more important point here uh if you're going to uh, deal with the oems ce analysis as a stress engineer or a ca engineer and mercedes benz daimler accenture kpit in uh, lnt in any other industries so they're gonna consider this hypermesh for meshing okay 90 to 95 percent they will mesh the model and they will create the geometry and uh, all the inputs and all so everything they will create in hypermesh and meshing mainly done in hypermesh so these industries don't recommend all the software for the meshing like a backers and all uh, just i heard it even they might consider that i don't know but uh, according to my uh, past considerations and uh, the people who i met so they told that if you are going to deal with the meshing you should know the hyper mesh perfectly hyper mesh is meant for meshing you can use the radio solver for non-linear analysis and uh, optic struct for structural analysis but we do have the 
advanced solvers like Alastina, okay, FECF, and Abacus to run the all the uh, explicit analysis and nonlinear dynamic analysis as well. Okay, so this is the uh, how exactly we need to read the elements, the first order, second order, what exactly is the description and element types, you can see the elements as well. So this is the elements and the elements nomenclature, how to read it and how to consider which is the first order, second order, we got to know, right? Yep, so that's all about this session. So I hope you got a clear cut idea what exactly elements we're gonna consider with respect to Abacus and uh, Hypermesh and how we need to read them if it comes to analysis, what type we need to consider. Yep, so that's all about this session. Thank you guys, stay tuned, bye everyone.